When I meet a man and woman, or a man or a woman, and we're looking at an infertility evaluation, um, I share with them the context, how I think about things to begin with. Because normally, uh, to have a baby usually requires a little wine, a little soft music, a little romance, a little passion, and you take care of business. And when that's not working, then we get clinical. We want to make sure we're doing our best in a thorough review. In doing our due diligence in evaluation, it's important to look at the different components. Sperm, egg, the fallopian tube, which I call the transportation lane, and the uterus, the landing pad, the nine-month rental unit. Those are the four main categories. Knowing the value of the information helps guide us to the matching the treatment the best way. So when we're doing the evaluation, looking at sperm, egg, transportation lane, and landing pad, the big four. We're doing a semen analysis to look at sperm concentration, movement, and shape. And we like to see about 15 million sperm per milliliter of fluid or more, and that's normal. And we like to see about 40% or more of the sperm moving, and about half of those moving like they know where they're going. We also do a more complex analysis here, and that's pretty unusual even among infertility centers. I want to get as much info out of the cup as possible when the guys have to have this done. And the ambiance of our center is that we have our honeymoon suite and our bachelor pad for the guys to collect. We also wash the sperm to see how many good moving sperm we recover because that's the feasibility test for what type of treatment we may use. We want to recover at least three million really good looking sperm or more in the whole specimen if a couple is going to consider an intermediate treatment like intrauterine insemination, what they often kind of call IUI. We're getting less than three million. We're not sure that's better than what they're doing on their own. We have to consider more advanced, uh, complex assisted reproductive technologies like IVF to help the sperm to the egg. on the transportation lane and landing pad, there are different types of tests that can be done. The two major ones are either a hysterosalpingogram, which is done on a hard table under an x-ray machine where they're putting fluid up into the uterus that blocks x-rays. It can be pretty crampy and they want to see the inner shape of the uterus and they want to see if the fallopian tubes are open with fluid coming through and spilling out of the tubes into the woman's tummy like smoke in a room. An alternative method, which we use here more frequently, is uh, more personalized, which is that your doctor's doing it, also in the office situation. It's called a saline infusion sonogram. And we get nearly, if not the same information from the, as the other tests with less discomfort and actually more information in a few ways. It'll tell us whether the lining of the uterus is normal and we use 3D ultrasound. I perform these procedures, three-dimensional ultrasound to look at the architecture of the uterus, but not just the lining, we can scan through the entire wall of the uterus and the whole architecture to see it, which the other test does not. And we can follow teeny little bubbles, which look sort of like a snow globe, little white flecks, as they zoom around inside the fluid and they zip down one tube or the other. And if a little puddle of fluid accumulates in a woman's tummy, which we can see by ultrasound, we know the tubes are open. So it's less invasive, it's more comfortable for the patient, and so we've moved more to the saline infusion sonograms rather than these x-ray tests. Then we get to the egg. How's the egg? Unlike the guys, women can't go into the collection room and rub their tummy a few times and pop some eggs out. That would make lovemaking very weird. You'd have to go to the Discovery Channel to see how fish do it. So we look indirectly at how eggs are initially because the egg is a single cell. It's the largest human cell, but a single cell. And to assess the egg, we look at two hormone tests and vaginal ultrasound. In the first three days of a woman's period, her system's revving up and she's gonna release the most hormone from her brain to tell her ovary what to do. And fortunately, it's named for what it does called follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. And it's at its highest output in the first three days of a woman's period. And when the ovary is perky and the eggs really respond, the follicles respond, the lead follicle, the dominant follicle, will start to make estrogen and feed back to the brain and say, hey, lay off up there, one egg at a time. Don't push too hard with this fertility hormone. So if a woman's system is really efficient, she doesn't have to release much FSH to get things done. And we want to see that value be relatively low in the first three days, less than a value of 10. If it's 10 or higher, I start to think there's an egg issue, the ovaries are resistant, and the brain's yelling at the ovary, get going and cranking out extra FSH. The second test in the same day is to see how many little resting follicles, if you will, eggs are in the queue. Players on the bench for the month are gonna compete for dominance of the, the one egg. And we like to see about eight or more. It gives us some idea of the reserve going on with the ovary. So this resting follicle count and the FSH level are done in the first three days. 
In the last four or five years, the third test is a blood test called anti-Mullerian hormone, named after a German anatomist from 1830 named Johann Peter Müller. And if we were in a car, I'd call AMH our gas gauge, and you don't want to be at E. Usually, like a quarter tank to a full tank, one-fourth to four-fourths, usually we'll see the level in the range of one to four. But if it's less than one, I'm worried about a decline in reserve. And if women have really irregular periods, excess hair growth, things like polycystic ovary syndrome, they have a little bit of ADD ovaries, and they may actually have bigger waves in their AFAs, F, uh, AMH is much higher than normal. So this gives us some clues about egg issues. Those are the main three tests to be assessing eggs.